In this lesson, you will learn how to start the SAP system. There will be some demos that will guide you through the lessons and you can try them out yourself on the server login provided. In this lesson, you will learn how to log on to the SAP system. Let us start by identifying the four input fields on the SAP logon screen. They are Client, User, Password and Language. In organizational terms, Client indicates an independent unit having its own transaction and master data. This concept facilitates several operations in one system and helps in holding several enterprises that are independent of each other in business terms. Every user has a unique username and password. Sometimes warning messages appear in the logon screen. This happens if the same user logs on to the system more than once. Though SAP version 4.6 and upwards allow for multiple logons, from a security and licensing angle, logons are monitored and messages appear if the same user logs in more than once. The language input field facilitates selecting the language that you want to work with. SAP has certain standard languages which can be used as required. Let us view a quick demo. This demo will guide you through logging onto an SAP system. Before you log on the first time, your system administrator will give you a user ID and an initial password. During the logon process, you should create a new password which you will use whenever you log on. The SAP logon icon is available in both the taskbar and the system tray on the bottom right corner of your desktop. Double click on the logon icon. The logon program appears. Select the server that is configured for you to log on. Click on logon. Now you can see the logon screen. Key in the fields with the information provided to you. In this case, enter client as 800. Enter the user ID and password provided to you. Press enter. You have now successfully logged on to the SAP system. Once you have logged on, you are brought to the initial screen on the SAP system known as the SAP Easy Access screen. The left side contains a tree hierarchy of available menus from where you can do transactions, run reports or execute period and activities. On the right side, you can insert an image. This image is made available centrally by your system administrator and cannot be customized by individual users. A demonstration of the SAP Easy Access screen. As seen earlier, on login, you are brought to the initial screen of the SAP system, the Easy Access screen. Its tree hierarchy on the left side lists available menus where you can execute transactions and run reports. On the right side, you can have an image to display your company logo. Next, we proceed to role-based menus. Roles are a set of activities performed by the user. Users access transactions, reports and other functionalities through menus which in turn depend on the roles assigned to them. Let us understand the process. Every user is attached to a role. A role is generated through a profile. The profile has a certain set of authorizations or level of access by the user given based on the authorization which helps in data security. SAP comes with predefined roles. You could use these or create your own roles, profiles and authorizations as per the requirement. You can see how the favorites chosen by a user can reduce his or her access time to that option. Let us now understand the various elements that are available on the screen of the SAP system. You should already be familiar with the menu bar and the standard toolbar. Let us look at some other screen elements which are shown on the slide. Command field. You can enter the transaction code for a specific task directly into this field. Standard toolbar is present on every SAP screen. Application toolbar has buttons that you can use in the currently active application. Check boxes allow you to make several selections from a group of options. Radio buttons allow you to make a single selection 
in a group of options. You can look at multiple information screens through the tab element. Status bar reflects the current status of the system and warning errors. Menu bar displays the menus and sub-menus of the application that you are currently working on. The slide here lists the different options available in the system to execute the different system functions. You can use any of the following options to execute your required system functions. By using the mouse, you can select the function using the menu tree, the function from the favorites, the entry from the SAP Easy Access menu. With keyboard, you can select your function with the keys Alt plus the underlined letter of the desired menu entry. You can select your function by entering the transaction code directly in the command field. Each function in SAP is carried out using a transaction code in the system. Here are other entry options. Slash N ends the running transaction. Slash L ends the current session. Slash O opens a new session without ending the current session. You can call the command field by using the keyboard also. The keyboard combination Control plus tab makes the cursor move from the current input field to the next input field. You can use tab to move within an input field group. We will look at the help keys that are available in the SAP system. The help key F1 provides help on fields, menus, functions and messages. The help key F4 is used for information on what values you can enter. It lists down the various values that are available for entering data. If an input field is staked, it means that it is a required entry field. These are called mandatory fields. Note that input fields can either be made mandatory or optional or hidden by changing the settings during the customization process. The system menu allows access to various system functions, while the help menu gives you access to the online documentation. The SAP library is a useful aid in getting to know the system functions. It allows you to access the online documentation. The online documentation also contains several tips and tricks to help you carry out common tasks easily and quickly. You should now be able to use various methods to call the SAP system functions and describe the standard menus system and help. Let us proceed to the next lesson on getting help when you're ready. Introduction to Condition Technique At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Use pricing procedures in pricing Describe pricing procedures and access sequences Explain header conditions Control new pricing using the pricing type Pricing Procedure All condition types permitted in the pricing are available in the pricing procedure. You can specify requirements for these condition types to arrive at your pricing. Through the condition types that are assigned to the pricing procedure, the system accesses the condition tables to arrive at the correct pricing. The reference level provides a method to specify the basis for arriving at the subtotals for the conditions or group of conditions. You can define each condition type based on your requirement as mandatory Manual or Statistical This is a demo on how the pricing is determined from the Customer Master Data. In the SAP system, follow the menu path to view the pricing procedure in the Master Data. Logistics Sales and Distribution Master Data Business Partners Customer Display Complete. In the Customer Display Initial screen, enter 1360 in the Customer field, 1000 in the Sales Organization field, 10 in the Distribution Channel field, and 00 in the Division field. Press the Enter key. You can see that under the Sales Area view, in the Sales tab area, under Pricing or Statistics, the pricing procedure is one standard, indicating that all pricing for the customer 1360 is standard. Let us see how the pricing procedure is determined from the order type. In the SAP Customizing Implementation Guide screen, follow the menu path. 
Sales and Distribution Basic Functions Pricing Pricing Control Define and Assign Pricing Procedures Assign Document Pricing Procedures to Order Types In the Change View, Sales Document Types, Document Pricing Procedure Overview Screen Place the cursor on the Sales Document Type OR the document pricing procedure assigned to the sales document type is A standard. We have seen that the pricing procedure in customer master record is 1 and the pricing procedure in sales document type is A. Let us now focus on how the pricing procedure is defined. In the SAP Customizing Implementation Guide screen, follow the menu path, Sales and Distribution, Basic Functions, Pricing, Pricing Control, Define and assign pricing procedure. Define pricing procedure determination. In the change view, pricing procedures determination in sales documents overview screen. Click the position button. Enter 1000 in the sales organization field. 10 in the distribution channel field. 00 in the division field. A in the dock pricing procedure field. And 1 in the customer pricing procedure field. Press enter. The cursor points to the corresponding data entered. The pricing procedure assigned is RVAA01 standard and the condition type is PR00 price. Let us now see how the condition type for this pricing procedure RVAA01 is determined. In the SAP Customizing Implementation Guide screen, follow the menu path, Sales and Distribution, Basic Functions, Pricing, Pricing Control, Define and Assign Pricing Procedure, Maintain Pricing Procedures. In the Change View Procedures Overview screen, place the cursor on RVAA01 and press the Enter key. Select the Pricing Procedure and double-click the Control Data folder. This will see all the condition types pertaining to RVAA01. You can set the condition types as mandatory, manual, and statistical by selecting the relevant checkbox. This is how the condition type is determined for a particular pricing procedure. Let us now look at the pricing procedure in a standard sales order. To begin with, let us create a sales order for the sales organization 1000 and distribution channel 10. In the Create Standard Order Overview screen, enter 1360 in the Ship to Party and the Sold to Party field. C-H-O-K-E-R in the P-O number field, M-10 in the material field, and 10 in the order quantity field. Press the Enter key. Select the order item line and click the Display Document Header Details button. This is the search button you see on the upper right section of the screen. The header data screen gets displayed. Under the Sales tab, in Pricing and Statistics, the pricing procedure is displayed as RVAA01, which determines the pricing procedure for this sales document. With this, we come to the end of the demo on pricing procedure determination. An access sequence defines the search strategy to locate the proper condition record. Every condition type uses this access sequence to find out the condition record. In the slide, there are three access sequences assigned to condition type PR02, Customer, Material, Price List, Currency, Material, Material. Normally, the access sequence is arranged from specific to general. The condition table is a combination of fields that form the key for the condition record. Let us now view a demo on how the access sequence is determined for the condition type PR00. In the SAP Customizing Implementation Guide screen, follow the menu path, Sales and Distribution, Basic Functions, Pricing, Pricing Control, Define Condition Types, Maintain Condition Type. In the Change View Conditions, Condition Types Overview screen, place the cursor on PR00. Select the Condition Type line and click the Details button. In the Details screen of the condition type PR00, the assigned access sequence is PR02. Let us now see the attributes of the access sequence PR02. 
in the SAP Customizing Implementation Guide screen, follow the menu path, Sales and Distribution, Basic Functions, Pricing, Pricing Control, Define Access Sequence, Maintain Access Sequence, An Information Message pops up. Now press the Enter key. In the Change View Access Sequences Overview screen, place the cursor on PR02 and select the Access Sequence line. Double click the Access folder. It opens all the accesses assigned to the Access Sequence PR02. These accesses have tables, the requirements and the exclusive fields in it. The exclusive field controls whether or not the system stops searching for a record after the first successful access for a condition type within an access sequence. Click any of the table lines and double click the fields folder to view the fields of that particular table. With this, we come to an end of this demo on how the access sequence is determined for a particular condition type. Pricing Overview let us understand the pricing overview with an example. An order for 120 pieces of Material 10 is created. The system needs to find out the pricing for this automatically. The relevant pricing procedure is determined based on sales area, document pricing procedure and customer pricing procedure combination. The system reads the first condition type in the pricing procedure and determines the access sequences assigned to that. The system reads the access sequence using the search strategy. Access sequences are nothing but condition tables where condition records are stored. The system searches for the condition record using the first access sequence. If unsuccessful, then the system goes to the next access sequence and the system does the search until it finds a valid condition record. After finding the validity condition record, the system passes the same into the sales document. The whole process is repeated for each condition type assigned to the pricing procedure. Changing prices manually in documents. In some scenarios, you may have to change the condition records manually due to various reasons and the system allows that change if the condition type is configured for it. The system keeps track of the manually made changes. In this demo, you will see how manual pricing is entered in a standard sales order. In the SAP Easy Access screen, follow the menu path, Logistics, Sales and Distribution, Sales, Order, Create. In the Create Sales Order Initial screen, enter OR in the Order Type field, 1000 in the Sales Organization field and 10 in the Distribution Channel field. Press the Enter key. In the Create Standard Order Overview screen that now opens, enter 1360 in the Sold to Party and Ship to Party fields. Enter a PO number, M-10 in the Material field, 10 in the Order Quantity field. Press the Enter key again. Select the Material Line item and click the Item Conditions button. In the Item Data screen, change the Customer Discount Percentage from the condition type K007 to 4% and press the Enter key. View the price changes. Now, enter RC00 in the condition field, 10 in the amount field and 1 in the quantity field. Press the Enter key. Select the line with condition type K007 and click the Condition Detail button. Under the Control Data tab page, the condition controller C changed manually as we had made manual changes. The condition origin is A automatic pricing. Select the line with condition type RC00 and click the condition detail button. Under the control data tab, the condition control is C. Changed manually as we had made manual changes and the condition origin here is C manually entered as the condition was entered manually. This is how manual pricing is entered in a standard sales order. With this, we come to the end of this demo. Conditions in the document header. Conditions can also be entered at the document header level and are known as header conditions and is valid for all items in the document. The header conditions 
are automatically distributed to the line items based on the net value. However, the basis for changing the distribution can be achieved by pricing routines by putting them in the field alternative formula for condition base value alt CBV in the pricing procedure. Let us now view a demo on how header conditions are distributed across line items. To begin with, in the SAP Easy Access screen, follow the menu path Logistics, Sales and Distribution, Sales, Order, Create. In the Create Sales Order Initial screen, enter OR in the Order Type field, 1000 in the Sales Organization field, and 10 in the Distribution Channel field. Press the Enter key. In the Create Standard Order Overview screen that you see now, enter 1360 in the Customer field and a PO number. In the first row, enter the value M-15 in the Material column and 10 in the Order Quantity column. In the second row, enter the value M-10 in the Material column and 10 in the Order Quantity column. Press the Enter key. Initially, the focus is on the condition type RB00. To go to the header conditions, follow the menu path. Go to Header Conditions. Enter RB00 for the condition type and 100 for the amount. Press Enter. Go back to the Create Standard Order Overview screen. To view the item conditions for the materials, click on the item line for material M-10 and click on the item condition button. In the pricing screen, the condition type RB00 is added with the amount minus 100. To view the next material M-15 item condition, click on the next item button. In the pricing screen, the condition type RB00 is added with the amount 100. Let us now look at the condition type HB00. To go to the header conditions, follow the menu path. Go to Header, Conditions, enter the condition type HB00 and the amount is 100 and press Enter. Go back to the Create Standard Order Overview screen. To view the item conditions from the materials, click on the item line for material M-15 and then click on the item condition button. In the pricing screen, the condition type HB00 is added with the amount minus 53.61 and for material M-10, the amount is minus 46.39. The header condition type HB00 splits the whole amount proportionately for each item in the sales order. You should now be familiar with how header conditions are distributed across line items. Creating conditions in the document header. In this slide, the header condition is copied directly into all line items in the order. In the second example, the header condition value is distributed to the line items based on their net value. New pricing and pricing types. The pricing behavior can be configured using pricing type. You have two controls to control the new pricing in the sales document. Updated prices on the condition screen are available both at header as well as item level. You can choose the relevant pricing type when the dialog box appears. To use the new pricing document, assign a pricing type to the pricing procedure in the customization. If nothing is maintained, the system takes B as default value and does the new pricing. Let us now look at how pricing is transferred from the delivery document to the billing document. In the SAP Customizing Implementation Guide screen, follow the menu path, Sales and Distribution, Billing, Billing Documents, Maintain Copying Control for Billing Documents, Copying Control Delivery Document to Billing Document. Click on the Position button, Enter, F2 as the Billing Type and LF as the Delivery Type. And press enter. Select the line item and double click on the item folder. On the display view item screen, click on the position button and enter TAN. Select the item category and click on details. In the details screen, the pricing type for the item category TAN is G, 
copy pricing elements unchanged and redetermine taxes. With this, we come to the end of the demo on transfer of pricing from the delivery document to the billing document. Pricing in the billing document. Copying control helps in carrying out new pricing based on your requirement during the billing process. Now that this lesson is over, you should be able to use pricing procedures in tracing, describe pricing procedures and access sequences, explain header conditions, control new pricing using the pricing type. Pricing fundamentals. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain how to use conditions in pricing, demonstrate how to use condition records, locate condition types in customizing. Groups of conditions. Listed in the slide here are some of the condition types with their access sequences provided in the SAP system. Condition records are stored according to this. You can add your own condition types and access sequences based on your need with the available fields. If you want to add new fields, you can do that in the field catalog. Condition records. You can maintain your condition records specific to an access sequence with a validity period. You are allowed to maintain scales on your condition records provided you configure your condition type accordingly. You can even specify a lower and upper limit for the condition record so that manual changes will be allowed only between that. Let us view a demo on creating and using condition records. We will begin by creating a condition record for pricing. In the SAP Easy Access screen, follow the menu path, Logistics, Sales and Distribution, Master Data, Conditions, Create, Prices, Individual Prices. In the Create Condition Record screen that you see, click the Customer or Material with Release Status button. In the Create Condition Records Fast Entry screen that opens now, enter 1000 in the sales organization field, 10 in the distribution channel field, and 1360 in the customer field. Enter PR00 in the condition type field and DPC1003 in the material field. Press the Enter key. Select the entire line and place the cursor on the material that has been entered. Double click the material record. The scales screen will open. Enter 1 in the first scale quantity field and 800 in the amount field. Enter 10 in the second scale quantity field and 750 in the amount field. Enter 100 in the third scale quantity field, 700 in the amount field. Now press the enter key. Save the record and exit. Let us now look at how to create a condition record for discount pricing. In the SAP Easy Access screen, follow the menu path Logistics. Sales and Distribution Master Data Conditions Create Discounts and Surcharges By Customer In the Create Condition Record screen that opens, click the Division or Customer button. The Create Condition Records Fast Entry screen is displayed. Here, enter 1000 in the Sales Organization field, 10 in the Distribution Channel field and 00 in the division field. Enter K007 in the condition type field and 1360 in the customer field. Press the enter key. Select the entire line and place the cursor on the material that has been entered now and double click on the material. It will take you to the scale screen. Here, enter 100 in the first scale value field and 2 in the amount field. Likewise, enter 1000 in the second scale value field and 3 in the amount field. Enter 5000 in the third scale value field and 5 in the amount field and press the enter key. Now save the record and exit. In the next segment of the demo, we will look at the effect of pricing on the record we just created. In the SAP Easy Access screen, follow the menu path under Sales and Distribution. Sales Order Create. In the Create Sales Order Initial screen, enter OR1 
in the order type field 1000 in the sales organization and 10 in the distribution channel. Press the Enter key. In the Create Standard Order Overview screen that is now displayed, enter 1360 in the Sold to Party field, 1360 in the Ship to Party field and PRCK01 in the PO Number field. Check if the required delivery date is showing a future date. Now, enter DPC1003 in the Material field and 9 in the Quantity field. Press the Enter key. To view the pricing of the material, select the line and click the item condition icon. In the pricing screen that now appears, you will see that for the condition type PR00, the amount captured is 800 per piece and the gross for 9 pieces is 7200. For the condition type K007, the customer discount is 5% of the gross amount, which is 360. Return to the Create Standard Order Overview screen and change the material quantity to 1. Press the Enter key. Now go to the item condition, select the line item and click the item condition button. We see that for the condition type PR00, the amount captured is 800 per piece and the gross for one piece is 800. For the condition type K007, the customer discount is 2% on the gross amount, that is 16. Return to the Create Standard Order Overview screen and change the material quantity to 101 and press the Enter key. Now, go to Item Condition, select the Line Item and click the Item Condition button. You see that for the condition type PR00, amount captured is 700 per piece and the gross for 101 pieces is 70,700. For the condition type K007, the customer discount is 5% on the gross amount, that is 3535. We have just seen the effect of the pricing condition reflected on the records. By this, we come to the end of the demo on creating and using condition records. A condition type determines the category of a condition and describes how the condition is used. The calculation type and the scale base type can be controlled for each condition type. Please go through the possible calculation types and scale base types that are given in the handouts. Let us now view a demo on how the pricing for condition type K007 is customized in the IMG screen. In the SAP Customizing Implementation Guide screen, follow the menu path, Sales and Distribution, Basic Functions, Pricing, Pricing Control, Define Condition Types, Maintain Condition Types. In the Change View Conditions, Condition Types Overview screen, click the Position button. A pop-up window will open. Enter K007 in the Condition Type field and press the Enter key. In the next screen, select the line with condition type K007 and click the Details icon. In the Details screen, under Control Data 1 tab area for condition type K007, we can see that the calculation type used is Percentage. Click the drop-down list to view the other options. The plus-minus marked as X indicates a negative symbol. All the values for the condition type K007 will be negative. Under the Scales tab, the scale basis for the condition type K007 is marked as B value scale. The scale basis for this condition is always given as values and thus the pricing for condition type K007 is customized. Condition Maintenance This slide explains how condition maintenance is done in the system. From SAP R2 Release 4.6a, an additional maintenance interface is provided for condition maintenance that allows mass maintenance of condition based on certain criteria. You can continue to call out the previous maintenance transactions for conditions by choosing Select using the condition type. Now that this lesson is over, you should be able to explain how to use conditions in pricing, demonstrate how to use condition records, Locate condition types in customizing.
there are many options available for customizing the local layout. For example, input history on the last n entries made by the user, font size, color, and so on. As you saw earlier, you can set personalized standard values in your user profile via parameter IDs so that you do not need to enter them every time.